Next, um, we have Emil Tampa, um, who I think is known to all of you, but uh, Emil is a senior scientist at the Institute for Work and Health, and he is the co-director of the Center uh, for Research uh, Disability Policy. Yes, I'm Center. Like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry, I got, got the I, got, I should know that name <laughs> by heart. Um, Center for Research on Work Disability Policy. Yeah, that's, thank you. That's good. Okay, um, so Emil's gonna. Emil is going to talk about um, some of the ideas that are in the draft strategy document around, you know, indicators that we might want to look at. Okay, so I only have a couple of slides. I mean, thank you, Gail, and your colleagues for the amazing overview of all of the data resources. I know there was a lot of material there, but we're making these PowerPoints available to everybody on the website webpage, as well as the videos. We're recording everything, as you probably know. So everything will be available, because it was a lot to digest, I imagine. <laughs> so, and, and it's really good information for going forward, because we've been talking a lot about monitoring and evaluation. So I think it's really important as we go forward to think about which kinds of data resources can we use to get a better sense of where we're at today and what kind of progress we're making over time. Um, so I just have a couple of slides here where I'll talk about the data gaps um, that um, actually Gail and I had a bit of a conversation about this yesterday, get a sense of what kinds of data resources aren't really readily available to us through the resources that we have available through Statistics Canada and ESDC. And one of the key ones I think is about employers and workplaces. A key gap we have with, with data resources is really getting a sense of what's happening at the employer or workplace level. A lot of the surveys that, that Gail had spoken about are about individuals in, in Canadian society, so you know, what their situations are like. But getting a sense of what's happening at the workplace level is really a, a critical gap in the data resources. So that's something we may want to think about how we can collect that kind of data, because we really want to assess that some of the barriers that employers face in hiring workers with disabilities, what are the, what are the barriers that they're, they're um, realizing and have to get, get past? You know, measurement of the level of understanding of disabilities that they have, the attitudes towards people with disabilities in workplaces, understanding the accommodations, you know, the, the misconceptions they may have, the lack of resources. All of the workplace level kinds of understanding is really critical for us to have in order to make um, a sense of where we need to get past those barriers. So there is not really survey data is available out there to, that address that kind of gap. So that's something we might have to do some primary data collection. Um, evaluation on, on measuring changes that employers and workplaces are doing over time as well. We'll need to kind of think about how, what progress these workplaces are making. And identifying um, actions in relation to accessibility and accommodation. So what kinds of things are they doing moving forward? Are they making progress on those actions? And then finally, um, and determine the availability of resources and toolkits for helping employers and, and labor groups. So that's another critical area. We want to know what they have available to them um, so that you know, if there's something missing, we can add to the roster of things that we make available to workplaces. Um, systems level, here's another important data gap as well. I mean, we talk a lot about um, individuals in society and different kind of contextual situations that they find themselves in, but systems level monitoring is a really critical part of, of what we're talking about here in the last couple of days. So you know, abs there's really an absence of monitoring and evaluation of Canadian disability policy systems as, a, as an aggregate, as well as at the programmatic level. Some of the programs have their own data resources but may not always be accessible to everybody for research purposes. Um, so um, s some of you may have been at um, the, the Federal Provincial Interface Panel session we had yesterday. Um, John Stapleton spoke about the, the, I think, nine or ten disability income programs that exist. I've listed them here. I won't go through them. So uh, you can imagine if we want to monitor the system, which is comprised of all of these different programs, it's a big task to do. Um, you know, it's really important to, to think about how, how people are doing in the system, who's falling through the cracks, you know, who needs assistance, who's getting the, the resources that, that, that they need to, to help them engage in the labor market or get the supports they need when they're not able to engage in the labor market actively. Um, John Stapleton has done some work on this. It's, he, he labels it the welfareization of work disability. That's sort of the trend he's noticing about the evolution of these programs, the growth in, in, in the welfare supports that people are seeking and the reduction in the supports from the other programs. But that's just one, only one aspect of that bigger picture. Um, um, but really important just to think about how we can, uh, uh, going forward, continue that process of monitoring and evaluation at the systems level to really understand what resources people are accessing where people are falling through the cracks. 
Um, and then the last bit I just want to talk about, and I mentioned um, in, in, in one of the panels yesterday about the need for um, developing a warehouse for, for this kind of um, data resources. Obviously, Statistics Canada and ESDC does some of that for us too, but we may want to think about other ways of warehousing some of the data that they don't generally collect. Um, so, um, you know, really the data gaps, thinking about what the data gaps are, creating a database initiative that works well under maybe different types of headings. And so this is part of our strategy document. We, we note this, you know, maybe the headings of recruitment, accommodation, workplace design, and technology. Um, maybe develop some case studies and stories of successes as well. That's important to warehouse that too, to think about, you know, what are the good examples that, that we can share with other people, that things that we know work well and have been successful in, in some kinds of contexts. Another thing we'd like to warehouse as well is inventory of toolkits for employers and workers. Um, some t things that can help them monitor the use, uptake, and experiences that they have. Um, and then create a, a guide for evaluating initiatives at the systems level, program level, and workplace level. So important to think about helping others do that continuous improvement process by having evaluation toolkits for, for different levels of the system. And then the other thing I thought about would be really great is to form a monitoring and evaluation um, stakeholder committee, you know, some a group that can get together to think about, you know, what resources do we have available, what resources do we still need to develop. You know, obviously, we'd want to have it comprised of all the stakeholder groups that are of relevance to, to this policy arena, so researchers, community members, public sector program, and employer partners as well, to, who could regularly meet to think about do we have a good um, um, access to a variety of data, different data sources on an ongoing basis and what are the key gaps that we still need to fill in terms of data resources for monitoring and evaluation. And I think that's a good segue to our next um, presenter who's Steve Tobin who is part of a, an initiative that, that does some of this kind of warehousing and, and development of data statistics on em employment um, in Canada. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. <laughs> 